welcome to these videos on the Rite of Spring. I hope that I can give you in these videos some ideas of how to practice this to improve your performance on the Rite of Spring. So let's get started. The Rite of Spring, the way the opening melody is constructed, it's really around three notes, C, B, and A. And what you find in the opening is, well, I guess you could call it an ornamentation of those notes. Keeping those notes in mind will really help you perform this. The CBA is later on ornamented by a D. Ornamented by a D in the air melody, but really basically uh, measures one, two, three, the first three measures are that motive, that three note motive. When we get to number one, which is the fourth or fifth measure, there you find a chromatic descending scale that is ornamented. Well, until the G flat, of course. Uh, but there you're going to find it's, it's just a, a little bit different, and certainly the finger patterns are different. Now, keeping in mind the shape of that melody, it's important that the grace notes added not receive the same weight as the main note. Now, in terms of the grace notes, uh, particularly the ones in measure one, we want the emphasis to be on the main note, not on the two grace notes that follow. For instance, we don't want... We want... So the grace notes are going to, at least in your mind, think of them as coming before the beat, before the main note, and you need to place those main notes correctly rhythmically. The other grace notes, the grace notes with the slashes through them, I find actually need to be played a little more harshly. It gives it the, um, well, I guess the, the sort of the Russian-Asian type of, of um, spice to this melody. They're played quickly, but with plenty of emphasis. So that they, they need to come out. In this case, be sure to play them with, with enough force. Very important in your practice of this passage is to keep um, a metric relationship between all the notes. They're written as 16th notes, triplet, eighth notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, all of that for a reason. True, it is cadenza-like. There is a lot of rubato that could be here. But um, actually, when the orchestra enters, which is really fairly soon in this solo, you're going to need to be following the conductor. And so a lot of that rubato is, is still within a very steady beat. Otherwise, all the musicians won't be able to quite play together. So be, be quite aware of that. You get some rubato in the sense of the fermatas and the amount of time you hold those fermatas. Uh, but beyond that, you are going to need to be, be with the conductor and with the ensemble. So I suggest for your first practice of this is to leave aside the rubato, leave aside all the ornaments, and just practice the notes metrically. You might want to take your metronome, and here's mine that again looks like a flying saucer. And I set my metronome for, well, you can try 40, 42, 44, something around that range. And with the metronome set, let's try to metrically play the notes in the first measure. See, the transition from the sixteenths to the triplets, obviously from the quarter note and back, can be very complex. So you need to practice this many, many times to make sure the divisions are accurate. The second measure is straight eighth notes, but then we follow on to the 4-4 uh, four -four measure, the third measure, with this quintuplet. So you've got to practice that transition from the duples, the two notes, to the five notes. Very complex. So a lot of your time is going to need to first be spent 
with gaining the rhythmic precision of this. And I understand the rhythmic precision with uh, the complex fingerings and the high register is, is really quite difficult. When you're practicing this uh, passage, I suggest you first practice the rhythmic divisions in small sections. Just a beat or two. Always have your rhythmic segment go to the downbeat of the next beat. That way, later on, we can link them up. So, for instance, let me practice a small segment for you. This is the end of measure one, leading to the second beat of measure two. This way I'm practicing my uh, triplets going to my duplets. So I'm a little late on the downbeat on that second beat. Let me try that again. So they're exactly precise. Now it was early. Okay, so I've got to practice that. That was better. That was better. So I'm practicing that little thing. Uh, what if I take uh, the triplet before that? In fact, let me practice the four notes, the, uh, the 16th notes with the triplet in that first measure. That wasn't too bad. Let me do that again. Yeah, I felt like I really had control of the transition there. Okay, now I can join those two segments together, uh, starting in measure one and going into measure two. There, that wasn't bad. So rhythmically, I now feel like I'm in control of that. Now, after I've mastered the rhythm, obviously then add the grace notes. But the grace notes need to come within the context of those main notes. Another segment to practice, for example, would be the, uh, the transition from the duples to the quintuplet. Uh, let's do the end of measure two up to the second beat of measure three. Not too bad. Let's try it again. Good, and I've got to listen to the pitch a little better, make sure that's all in tune. Yeah, my high B tends to be a little sharp. So, you can see the method I use to practice the rhythm. I take these small segments, practice them, make sure the rhythm's together, then join them together. The joining together is called concatenation. Concatenation, joining together, your word of the day. Uh, so, within this passage, then again, look at the evenness of the rhythm, and then to that, we then add the grace notes, working that into your uh, technique.